your Coca-Cola program. Claudia, brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Listen, relax, help yourself to a frosty bottle of Coke. And now, Claudia. They saw, they met, they married each other six whole weeks ago. Now it's a Monday morning, the beginning of another seven days together for Claudia and David. Morning particularly Monday mornings, were made to get up in. And so... David! Hmm? David! Hmm? Oh, go back to sleep again. It's only half past six. Don't be still. You've got that early appointment you've been to haven't you? Yes, but I can get breakfast on the road. Oh, quick, bring I'm up. Where are my Oh, here they are. Oh. Be out of the bathroom in a minute. Hey, hey, Claudia... It'd be simpler if you'd just stay in bed and let me get in there and take my shower. Don't worry. Be just in no time. And anyway, I'm not the kind of wife who lets her husband take breakfast out. That's nice. Now, I'll run and fix the breakfast quick. All right. Well, leave the door open while you shave so we can talk back and forth. I don't like to talk back and forth while I shave. Then you can just listen. But I like company while I work. No. Uh, hey, Claudia. Yes? What happened to the razor? Shave. Listen, I know you didn't shave with it, but did you did you use it to clean something with? Oh. Oh what? There was a little thing down the window yesterday when I just washed Well, I want you to leave my razor alone. Easy. You're not talking to me like a bride. Darling, you've got to learn that one of the things a man doesn't like is to have his razor tampered with. It's an unwritten law of marriage. How much does your razor cost? It's not the cost, it's the principle of the thing. Suppose I didn't have another place. Well, David, you have, though, haven't you? David, answer, have you? Yeah, I have. Well, then you're very inconsiderate to make a fuss for no good reason. I'm inconsiderate. Just because I happen to have another blade, I'm in the wrong. Oh, you're impossible. Why did you marry me if I'm impossible? I don't know. I, I just like impossible people, I guess. Well, that's good. David, we almost had a fight, you know was in Harrow Street. Uh-huh. Are you putting any time yet? No. Well, let me know when you are. What's it to you? Nothing to me, but everything to the eggs. I've timed you every day this week. I cook them in after you've got your time. They're just right when you come to the table. Eggs are cooked with a clock, not by a man's tie. Anyway, I'm nowhere near up to my tie. I'm only at my socks. Only at your socks? At the moment, I have on one brown sock and one blue sock. We men are wearing them the same color this season. Oh, dear, you must have taken them from the wrong pile. Are there two piles? Of course there are. Some of your socks had holes, so I made two bundles. Even so, my love, with socks, you always roll them up in pairs that match. Not just any two socks that come to hand. But, David, they're rolled up that way because they don't match. You're telling me they don't match. Oh, oh, Eureka. What happened? I found the other blue sock. Oh, that was very clever of you. There's a hole in it. Naturally, you took it from the wrong pile. Darling, angel, I, I could wring your neck. Well, then. That's nice. I like you to wring my neck. I haven't got time to wring anymore. Come along to breakfast. Mmm, doesn't the coffee smell good? Smells pretty strong. David! What? It boiled away. Never mind. Yes, I do mind. I'll add water. I don't like coffee with water added. You won't know it. Uh, but I do know it. Uh, look, darling, I have to go. But you can't go on an empty stomach. You'd be surprised. Goodbye. David, come back. You didn't kiss me. I haven't time. But David, promise me to get breakfast on the road. That's what I wanted to do in the first place. Gloria, what's the matter with you? Nothing, Mama. Don't tell me nothing. You're dragging along the street like you'd lost your last friend. Shopping makes me a little tired, I guess. Didn't plan. Come on. 
gone out with it bothering you? Nothing. What did you and David quarrel about this morning? Mama, how did you know we had a quarrel? Whose fault was it? Your fault. My fault? Claudia, one thing I don't want is to cause any trouble between you and David. Oh, don't be silly. He adores you. He thinks you're just about perfect. Then what do you mean it was my fault? You should have taught me how to darn socks better. It was his socks that started it. Mama Downing gets me down. I have absolutely no talent for it. How do you know? Have you tried? Not yet. I haven't gotten around to it. Have you a darning egg and darning needles in the house? I have regular eggs and regular needles, and that's enough for any sock. Mama, look. Look at what? That pet shop. There's a monkey in the window. Come on. Claudia, stop pulling me. I'm not interested in the monkey. I'm interested in buying some darning cotton to patch up your marriage. But I have another idea to patch up my marriage. Mama, David and I need a common interest. Such as? Such as something living, something helpless. Something we can both love. You're not fit to be trusted in a pet shop by yourself. Oh, wait for me. I'll go in with you. Oh, oh Mama, the puppy's enchanting. Very. Come along out, Claudia. The place smells terrible. All pet shops smell funny. But I don't have to stay in them. Uh, what can I do for you, ladies? Nice little Pomeranian puppy? I don't think so. My husband doesn't like small dogs. Ah, Say, I got an idea. How'd he like a new one? You mean... You mean one of those great big black dogs that look like lions? Well, they do look like lions, come to think of it. And say, have I got a beauty. Oh, I don't see him. Where is he? Uh, I got him tied up in the backyard. He's too big to keep in the shop. I'll go ahead. Well, please do. Claudia, are you out of your head? A dog that looks like a lion. A dog that's too big to keep in the store. Oh, it doesn't hurt to look at him. Except that every time you look at something, it takes five years off my life. Watch out, ladies. Here he comes. Claudia, get out of his way. Oh, 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 my, I'm awfully sorry, Miss. Oh, Let me help you up. Did you hurt yourself? No. Just went down all of a sudden. Just put his paws on my shoulder and down I went. I'm awfully glad he didn't hit for you, Mama. I'm shaking in every limb as it is. Come on, Major. I'll take you back in the yard where you belong. Oh, baby wants to see you in that the way you were. No, no, don't. He didn't mean any harm. He was just friendly, wasn't he? Hmm. Oh, Mama, look at his eyes. Aren't they beautiful? Hmm, he's curved like hell. He's enormous. Well, he must be the biggest dog oh. there is, isn't he? If he's any bigger, I ain't met him. This here fellow weighs over 200 pounds. And he's gentle? Oh, you can put your hand right in his mouth, lady. Now go on, put your hand in his mouth. He won't bite. No, 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 thank you. I'll, I'll take your word for it. He has the face of an angel. It is a he, isn't it? He's a he, all right. Well, that's good. Claudia, what possible interest is that to you? Because I'm going to buy him. Buy him? Mama, I have to have him. David will divorce you for a lunatic. You'll not only wreck your marriage, but you'll wreck your apartment. Hi there. Anybody home? Why not? I was in the back. No kiss? David. Look, David. We're not still quarreling, are we? I hope not. So do I. It worried me all day. Me too. I brought you something. Oh, David, my favorite chocolate. Uh, I bought you something too. You did? Mm Mm-hmm. Three guesses what it is. Oh, oh. Animal, vegetable, or mineral? It's animal. What kind of animal? It's a long story. Make it short. You see, I wanted to cement our marriage. You wanted to what? Well, you went off this morning without kissing me. I know, and I'm sorry. That's why I brought you the candy. And that's why I bought you the dog. The what? Dog. You say dog? David, you always wanted a dog, and your mother would never let you have one. Well, well, listen, Claudia, there's a couple of things in life a man likes to pick out for himself, and one of them is his dog. I know, but... but you see, I happened to pass a pet shop. You bought a dog at a pet shop? 
I certainly didn't buy any drugstore. Oh, good night. Look, Claudia, you buy canaries at a pet shop, but if you want a man-sized dog, you go to a kennel in the country. Well, we can return him, or I didn't pay for him. Oh, that shows a little sense anyway. We'll see him back after supper. Where is he? Locked in the bedroom. What kind is he? He can eat? No. What's the other name you usually buy in a pet shop? Oh, Pomeranian. Oh, heavens. Well, I suppose I ought to be grateful it's not one of those white toy poodles. Oh, no, it's bigger than a toy poodle. Now, now, David, I'll open the door quietly, and you... You better stand with your back against the wall. Why? Because. You'll see what. How did you happen to get a dog like this at a pet shop? It was just an accident. I'll say it was. We'll take him back. Over my dead body, we'll take him back. <laughs> oh, he's magnificent. Look at those eyes. Look at that, that confirmation. Oh, lady, you've got good taste in husbands and better taste in dogs. David, you like him. Do I like him? I always wanted either a Dane or a Newfoundland. <laughs> Dogs are pretty expensive. He cost over five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. But the man charged me twenty-five. Twenty-five? Oh, that, that, that's giving him away. Well, I know it is. But David, we oughtn't to fool ourselves. It's not the initial cost; it's the upkeep. He's knocked over two lamps already, and I bought pounds and pounds of hamburger for him. I gave him five pounds for supper. Mm, four and a half, really. I left out half a pound for What are you trying to tell me? We can't keep him? Oh, David, I want to, but I was afraid you wouldn't. Where are we sleeping? You can have my bed. And you can have mine. Saddle. Here, come here, old fella. Let me see your teeth. <laughs> He's only a pup. Oh, look at him. Look at him. He wants to play. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, David. Watch the table. Do you want to fight, huh? Oh, 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 yeah. Come on, fight. beginning of an exciting week in the life of Claudia and David. Big moments to remember, little moments to enjoy with pleasant friendliness. You know, good times and delicious refreshments just naturally go together. That's why it's always a fine idea to keep ice-cold Coca-Cola in the refrigerator, ready to serve at any time. And tomorrow, when you're shopping at the grocery store... You'll find it mighty pleasant to pause at the familiar red Coca-Cola cooler. Have a bottle of ice-cold Coke, maybe with a neighbor you've met there. When you shop, shop refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday... Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. Another Coca-Cola show is on the air every Sunday for your enjoyment. The pause that refreshes on the air. With the music of Percy Faith, the Coca-Cola Orchestra, and guest stars. Consult your newspaper for time and station. And now, au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause 
The pause that refreshes. Claudia is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of New York, Incorporated.